This is the future. So my advice to you, get a gun. Learn how to shoot. Learn how to protect yourself. On my community page, I posted about a break-in that happened in broad daylight, literally around the corner where I used to live. The house had an alarm, the house had a gate. The It's very interesting because when I saw the post on next door, I saw the name, and this is kind of funny. When I see certain names, I know that they do something. And what I mean by that is, um, you can see the post, her name was Dana Masood, and I was like, she's a doctor. And I went ahead and Googled her, and she's a rheumatologist. So someone broke into their house, stole their valuables, she said valuables, whatever that was, and it was a gang of people. It wasn't one burglar, it wasn't two, it was a robbing crew. Now, why am I bringing this up? For the longest of times, I have used to live in Sandy Springs, about 13 years. My whole 13 years of living in Sandy Springs, I never experienced crime. Never was a break-in, never heard of an assault, never heard of anything. 13 years. Now, some of you may remember when I had my car rental business. And for some reason, the only way to get my car back from some people was to file a police report. They wouldn't bring the car back. They wouldn't communicate. And I had filed 19 police reports with the, S the Sandy Springs Police Department. And I got a message, and this is another reason that I got the car rental business. I got a message from a detective that they were no longer going to investigate. They were telling me that they were not going to dedicate the resources. And I remember it got to the point where I started to get these same police officers for the reports. And I actually saw one of these officers at a restaurant. And I was like, hey, how's it going and everything? It's like, I got a question. What has happened with crime in the city of Sandy Springs? And he kind of put his hands in his head and he said, it's, he said, it's crazy. He said, we're experiencing things that I have never seen since I've been on the force and I've been on the force seven years. Now, why am I talking about this? A wealthy area for the longest time, a lot of criminals didn't come over here. They just didn't. What's happening? And before this, there was another break in in off Northside Drive, which is literally two miles from Hurst Ferry. A similar situation where a crew, once again, a robbing crew, it's not an individual. What is happening? And I'm going to put this on social media. You know, Hush Puppy, he was a big guy on Instagram, Hush Puppy. He used to show his lavish life lifestyle. He used to show fancy cars, fancy clothing. He lived in Dubai. Hush Puppy was a criminal. He Hush Puppy's in jail right now. And what I am beginning to understand is that instead of going to work a regular job or to make minimum wage, people are actively starting to choose crime. They're actively starting to choose crime. Part of this is the recession. Part of this is the global reset. But a big part of this is from a cultural standpoint, we have dramatically changed. I remember when I was a boy, I never thought about robbing anyone. I never thought about stealing anything. I thought about what could I do to earn some money? I couldn't wait to get a certain age so I can get a job so I can start earning some money. Culturally, we're not that, you know, there's pockets where there are kids growing up like that. I would say Midwest, the country, there are kids growing up like that. But in this city, you have people who do not want to earn their stripes, who do not want to work their way up their ladders. According to Hush Puppy, Instagram, his Instagram account is still up. People want that good life. People want the best life. People want steak dinners. People want Hellcats. And if they have to commit crime to get these things, so be it. That's where we are as a culture. So in 2023, we're going to see scamming, all kinds of petty crime explode, explode. Every time I go to the bank and I start to, you know, I've have business lines of credit, 
it's I'm always at the bank for an hour or two because they have this thing called know your customers and banks are getting hit really, really hard with scammers, really, really hard with scammers. So if you're not a scammer due to the fact that there's so many scammers out there, you have to be extremely vetted um, because of the climate that the banks are operating in. And what I see happening, and this is just scamming. This isn't the violent crimes. This isn't the rapes. This isn't the suicides. This isn't the murders. This isn't the physical assaults. All that's going to explode in 2023. It's going to explode. And what we're going to see and what we're going to have happen is a cultural shift. Going back to, you know, once again, the, the criminals are leaving leaving the hood. They're leaving the hood and they're going to the nicer neighborhoods and they're committing violent assaults and, and <sighs> holding people hostage in their house, uh, robbing houses in broad daylight. This is going to prove like once again, if you want to get into security, what I understand is going to happen in the near future is at some point there's going to be armed security roaming these neighborhoods. It's coming because it's going to get so bad. It's going to get so bad. We're not where we're going right now. Just that, that break in. Like I said, I lived in Sandy Springs for 13 years. Nothing went down. Nothing. And now, case in point, there was two homeless people that I used to see in Sandy Springs for years and years and years. I can't count how many homeless people I've seen in the last two years. Homeless people have moved in, criminals have moved in, and it's just going to get worse because the word on the street is the Sandy Springs police. I'm a speeder, right? And the Sandy Springs police do not have speed traps. Typically, they don't, they're, they're, you know, every now and then you'll see a cop on the side of the road with a radar gun, broad daylight, but they don't have, they don't hide. I mean, typically, unless you are really doing something, and I feel that the attitude of the Sandy Springs police officers are starting to change because they haven't had to deal with wholesale crime at the level that is exploding. They hadn't had to deal with it. And that's one of the reasons I got a call from the detective telling me that they weren't going, because the resource is like, we can go ahead and go after someone who stole a car or we can deal with this violent crime. Once again, you know, I just got pushed to the, you know, end of the line. And that was one of the reasons that I, at that point, when I, when I got that phone call, I stopped renting out cars that day. Stopped renting out cars. And as my cars came back, unfortunately, the people who had cars, they actually brought them back. So I was glad about that. But these robbing crews, these rappers, these rappers, they have made it cool to be a scammer. Bam Man Kevo. These robbing crews, right now, there are young men in a house who, who are planning to commit a caper tonight. They're sitting down, they're talking about it, and they're going to go take from someone who's earned what they have. They went to work, they bought it. They're going to go take it right now, right now. At, at this moment, there's a group of men sitting around plotting to go rob someone. And what's going to happen is this is going to become a culture. Going back to California, you have the clip, the crips and the bloods. We're going to have robbing culture. We already have it to a degree, but it's, it's about to get bigger. It's about to get much, much bigger. And let's go ahead and put the single, broke, sexless men. This is going to be the population that the robbing crews are going to start recruiting from. Yo, man, you don't have no money. You don't have no bitches. Come with us. We get you all that. Remember Snoop Doggy Dog, that song where he was talking about all these things about that's they're going to start recruiting these guys and these guys, because they don't have nothing going on. They're going to just go ahead and like, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. And they're going to join the robbing crew. Gangs are going to explode. Gangs are about to explode. And let's go ahead and talk about the sugar baby trade right now. I haven't looked in a long, long time and, you know, because I'm not doing any research on that. But right now there's a girl who is broke, desperate, struggling, got issues, and she's sitting now thinking this girl next year will become a full fledged prostitute. Right now, she's just an average girl living an average life, doing her thing, but she's struggling. And she's going to go on this website with the thoughts that she can get a sugar daddy. Once again, the economy is coming down. The number of men who are capable of giving a woman 
a lot of money for little or nothing is dropping dramatically. Dudes are not doing that. So she's gonna go on the website, she's gonna try to be a sugar baby at first, and she's gonna find out they ain't gonna work, but she she's committed to it. And next thing you know, she's gonna start turning tricks. So the sex trade, once again, homosexual and women, homosexual males and women, are gonna start turning tricks like it's going out of style. I put out a, a video years ago talking about the price of pussy was an all time low. It's about to drop even lower because you're gonna have girls who are gonna go out there and they're gonna try to get X amount of dollars. And once again, you're gonna have a chick who's working maybe a waitress and she makes $250 after taxes per week. She could turn two tricks and make that. That's gonna be her mindset. She's gonna like, I can go out and sleep with five guys in a week and make almost what I made in a month in a week. So prostitution is about to explode. Right now, there's a bunch of, like I said, you know, we got the single, desperate, broke, sexless males who are gonna turn to crime. We have the single, desperate, broke women who are about to start selling pussy. We're gonna have a situation where, you know, the economy, we have the primary economy, which is, you know, going to Apple, buying an Apple laptop, going to Porsche, buying a Porsche, that's the primary economy. Then we have the secondary economy, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Offer Up. Then we have the criminal economy. The criminal economy, which is going to include gangs, robbery, assault, scamming, prostitution. In 2023, you're going to see the largest increase in the criminal economy that we've ever seen. Number one, morals have fall, fallen to the wayside. Morals have fallen to the wayside. People need to do whatever they need to do to get that dollar. So right now, there's a girl who's in high school. She will be a full-fledged prostitute in 2023 because it's all about that money. And people are going to do whatever they have to do to get that money. If they got to pull a gun on someone and hold them up to get that money, that's what they're going to do. If this trick, she's got to sleep with 10 men a night, that's what she's going to do. We're going to see the de-evolution of the average person society. Average people are in the position where they're about to start catching hell. Right now, and there, there's, 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 there's an emerging population of people who don't want to work a regular job. There will be people who will graduate high school in 2023. In 10 years in the future, they will never have a normal job. They will be doing gig work. They'll be doing DoorDash. They'll be doing Instacart. They'll be doing Uber, Lyft. These folks will never ever have a normal job. You wanna know why? They don't know how to interview. We're, we're gonna see that for low level, anyone can do these type of jobs. They're not even gonna have interviews. It's just like you're gonna fill out an application, they're gonna throw you a badge, say show up and we'll train you. And the jobs that you have to interview for, it's gonna be a whole different gang. It's gonna be a whole different level because these jobs are gonna pay much better. They're gonna be part of a career track, but we're gonna have, a, let's call it the bottom 30% of the of the, of the the society. The bottom 30%, they'll be doing gig work at best. They'll be doing gig work at best. They'll be doing crime at worst. And it's like, it's making me, you know, really, really think about my next move. Cause my next move next year was to move out of here and get another house. And I'm gonna be looking for a house that is defensible. And what do I mean by that? My last house, it wasn't defensible. There was one whole side of the house that was nothing but glass. And the door to the driveway was a door with a bunch of glass panes. I, I will not be moving into a house like that with a glass door, easy access, because from an architectural standard, they're beautiful. But from a defense posture, these are absolutely the worst house. Cause what we're gonna have a situation as we go forward that we're going to have people being broken in houses broken in people kidnapped people pistol whip and my next house has to be defensible meaning that all of the entry doors will be solid with a peephole there will not be even though it's beautiful and honestly you know let me go ahead and cook here i'm thinking about building a house and let me go ahead and explain how we'll build this 
house. I would build this house where there's a lower level where there's no windows. You would have to walk upstairs to get to the main level where the front door would be. But on the lower level, there will be no windows. There will be no easy access. And it would be to a point where the front door would be reinforced. The back door would be reinforced. I would have a steel or a heavy wooden garage door. And this is the thing, I wouldn't have smart locks because here's the thing, a lot of people are moving to smart locks and you're gonna have people go online and hack their locks and walk in their house. I'm gonna keep the regular old key lock and you know, and bolts and stuff. But that's the kind of house I'm thinking about building and putting a solid fence around this house and have a sliding, not like, cause these gates that open, I mean, they're not going to stop anyone. Like if someone had an old car, they didn't really care about it. They could just ram up there and be in there. So get me a good, heavy sliding gate that slides closed that can take the width, the, the impact of a car trying to drive through it. That's the kind of gate. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a defensive compound. It would be a beautiful house from an architectural standpoint, but it will be very hard to break into. That's what I'm thinking, because more than likely, you know, like I said, I don't know where I'm at, but more than likely I may build and build this house and because I, you know, I have a vision for it because I, I like modern architecture. But going in the future, security, security companies, armed security, uh, digital security, growth industries, growth industries. So if you want to start a security agency with armed security guards, you will be in a growth industry. These are going to be booming industries. You're going to have people who are going to start hiring bodyguards, people who normally would not hire bodyguards because Here's the thing. Um, why did this house on Hertz Ferry get broken into? When you're driving down Hertz Ferry, all you see are big, beautiful, magnificent houses. You know that everyone on that street does well economically. Just because if they weren't doing well economically, they couldn't live on that street. And, you know, it's kind of making me reconsider a lot of things because one of the things is, I don't show receipts anymore because all I was doing was just making myself a target and getting a lot of hate. But going forward, the world is going to be very, very different than the world is now. It's going to be, I'm not going to say apocalyptic. That's too far. But we're going to have, even though we're a first world country, we're going to have attributes that would be considered part and parcel of third world countries. And this violent crime, this crime of people breaking into people's houses, that's going to become a norm. Sad to say in the, few, in the coming years, that's going to become a norm. And as a honest citizen, you need to learn how to shoot. You need to go ahead, get yourself a gun, go to the range and learn how some, some defense. And not only you, if you're a man of the house, you should teach your wife how to shoot a gun. And if you have children, teenagers, you should take them to the range and everyone in the house should know how to use a gun because there may come a day where you're all sitting around watching television and these criminals will be bold because it used to be uh, burglars were very particular. They would never try to rob a house that they knew someone was home and they would never carry a gun. They would always go to a house that was empty, where it was clear there was no one home. They would never carry a gun. That's going, that's, that's out the window. Uh, these burglars will be armed with guns, knives, and if they need to shoot you, they will shoot you. They will shoot you. I, I, let me say this again, they will shoot you because once again, the broke, desperate men of society. They don't care about themselves. Why are they gonna care about you? Why would they care about you? And you know, years and years ago, when I had my warehouse and Mountain Industrial is on the backside of Stone Mountain. And there's a bunch of low income apartments that were, you know, go down Mountain Industrial. Uh, there was a bunch of them. And I remember that one night I was in the warehouse and I heard some guys outside talking and then they were trying to lift up my dock door. So at this point I, I had a Glock 357 SIG, slapped the clip in it, went to the door and went out there and confronted them. And I was like, what are you guys trying to do? Y'all need to leave. And then they started walking to me and I just pulled out my gun, cocked it. And they, they saw the gun, they raised their hands and they, they backed up and they got in their car and they left. I I mean, I want you to think, if I didn't have that gun, I may not be here. I want you to really think about that. And you know, I went back inside and I was kind of shook. I was just like, what is going on? What is going on? 
So when I left, I made sure to open up the door slow make sure they went out there. And then I told my business partner about it and she started packing her gun. And what you're going to see is, and this is driven by social media. This is purely driven by social media. You're going to see the people who don't have the things that they want in life. They're going to like take it or scam their way into it. This whole notion of working a job, working your way up. No, no, we're not. We're, we don't have time for that. We want that now. And if we got to put a gun to your daughter's head to get that life, that's what we're going to do. And that's where we're heading as a society. This is kind of crazy because if you go back, this isn't the first time society has been here. It's not. Oliver Twist, if you don't know what that is, Google it. Oliver Twist, if you go back to those days in London, they had all of these orphans running the streets in London. You wanna know why? Because their mothers and fathers abandoned them. It, this whole notion that a mother would have a child and love and take care of her child is a relatively new notion. It used to be that if a woman was in a bad situation and she had a kid, she would leave the kid on the steps of the church. And they had all of these orphans running around with no family, no one to look after them. So this isn't the first time that society has had this violent, crazy underclass. If you go back to the 40s and 50s, when men were coming back home from World War II, and then we had this incredible boom of prosperity. Essentially, if you wanted a job, you can get a job. Prison population wasn't as big because at that time, the only people who went to jail were true criminals. These were people who were socially or social paths. There was something wrong with them. Or they came from bad families. But now what you're going to have are kids who come from good families, a mom, a dad. They're working. They provide it. These kids will fall into these robbing gangs. These kids will be part of the broke, sexless, single men, the most dangerous animal on the planet. This is the future. So my advice to you is one, get a gun, learn how to shoot, learn how to protect yourself. One of the reasons I'm in this building, and incidentally, we had a community meeting with the police. We've not had any break-ins. You want to know why? It ain't easy getting in. It's hard to get in here. If you don't have access, it's hard to get in here. Uh, to move in here, it's a pain. <laughs> it's a pain. So I don't know if I'm going to leave the, the high rise. I may move to Midtown. It's real interesting because uh, I was in Midtown and the vibe's completely different in Midtown than it is in Buckhead. So I may move into a Midtown high rise next. Don't know. Still researching it. But I'm very, very conscious and aware of security. Because going forward, the next 10 years are going to see a wholesale change in America and the mores of America in the pop. Because once again, we have a whole group of people who don't want to work. It's not that they can't work. They don't want to work. They don't want to do it. They don't want to have a low wage minimum. They don't want that. Go to Instagram and check out Hush Puppy. That's what these people want. And if that's what if it takes killing you, killing your wife, killing your child for them to get it. So be it. That's where we're headed. And it's very, very sad. I'm just here to give you guys a warning, a warning of where society's headed. Because once again, let me tell you another reason. Crypto is going to crash even more and the stock market's going to crash. For a minute, this was a presumed way of out. Like I can get in the stock market, I can get me some crypto and I can get rich and don't have to work. Those dreams are about to be dashed and these people are going to be dangerous. They're going to be very, very dangerous.